Hello my friends, this is Jeannie. Welcome back. If you are a first time visitor, welcome and thank you. In this video, I am just going to craft, my friends. It is Friday nights. I have some Harry Potter playing on the television in my craft room. It's pretty quiet. Um, rested. I slept a lot the past two days. I think I finally just crashed between work and just everything lately. I've been so exhausted. I haven't really spent much time in my craft room, but it's Friday. I want to craft. So I thought I would just turn this video on and record what I'm working on. I'm going to do as little editing, if any editing, with this video. Uh, my intention is just to let it play and you can craft along with me. On occasion, I will throw up a card linking a video if I need to, or if I refer to one. <laughs> I learned how to add cards to my videos. It's so cool because now when I reference one of my videos, I can throw up a card and it's just a simple matter of you cl clicking on that card and following the video. So that's pretty cool. What I thought I would do today is play with some napkins that I recently purchased from Diane H. She has a, she has an Etsy shop, Pretty Pink Cottage, and I purchase from her shop all the time. She has so many amazing things in her shop and she's just an awesome, wonderful human being. I love, love, love watching her. I will link her video or her YouTube channel down below. You can go check her out. She does a lot of junk journals, collaging. I love, love, love watching her process. I learned so much from watching her. And so if junk journaling is your thing, she's someone you definitely want to check out. I purchased these awesome napkins from her shop and I really want to play with them. So I thought that, oh, and let me share because this was kind of a surprise. I don't know. I don't know if she mentioned this, um, but I was kind of surprised. The Santa napkin, I just assumed it was going to be one panel with the Santa image and the rest was going to be something else. But my goodness four panels of this beautiful Santa. So you cut that napkin in four. I mean, I have, my napkins are going to go a long, long way. So I'm super excited about that. So I want to play with those napkins. So the first thing I did was I cut it in four. I cut it in four and then I peeled off the backing of the napkin so that all I am left with is the layer with the Santa image on it. And I have four of those that I'm going to set to the side and play with. And these, you can save this for your art journaling for other projects. I am going to put that to the side because I have another project in mind and I want to experiment with those layers to see how it works out. So I am going to use the napkin and make some albums and I want to make albums using envelopes this is not the first time I've done albums using envelopes and in fact these albums that you see here are albums that I made during the first time my first session where I shared with you the process on how I make them. So I'm not going to repeat that tutorial here. Instead, what I will do is link that video, or not link actually, I am going to throw up a card to that video right here. Boom, right there's the card. So click on the card and you will go to the video where I share the process on how I made these. And it will also include a link to I'm a Cool Mom. I'm a Cool Mom is who I learned from. And um, I want to make sure that she gets proper credit too because this is not my idea, obviously. I'm sure a lot of crafters have had this idea before, but I found her tutorial to be the best, simplest, most concise, and I'm all about that. So definitely check that out. 
I wanted to use some envelope albums that I already made. This is a little too tall though. So what I had to do was cut it in half. So I took my metal ruler, <laughs> my X-Acto knife, and I eyeballed what I thought was half and just carefully, patiently kept slicing and slicing and slicing away until the album was cut in half. So once that was done, I then went in and peeled back the flaps of the envelopes to create these flips. Okay, so inside when you make an envelope album, you have the envelope pockets themselves, right? creating these awesome amazing pockets in your album that you can if you're lucky carefully peel back see that you can carefully peel this back to create some flip elements not all envelopes allow you to do that but in my case these craft color envelopes that I believe I believe these were by recollections uh, allowed me to do that so I did if I wasn't able to peel them back then I wouldn't peel them back I'll just deal with the album as is but since I can and I was able to now I have this awesome mini album with these flip elements that I can play with to create more interactive elements in my album now, um, am I going to leave each page with a flip like this? No. I will seal. I will cut some of the pockets down and seal them to create, I should say, I will cut some of the flaps down and seal them to create some pockets. I will create some side pockets, maybe some top loading pockets. I will fold some of these back to create some tuck spots. I'll just play around with it. You know, it's going to be very intuitive. No rules, no measurements. We are just going to eyeball it um, and see what we finish with. Um, well, okay, there might have to be some measuring because I do want to create some mats for the inside of the album. And um, I will measure that just for the sake of my sanity. But in terms of dealing with the flaps, we're not going to measure. We're just going to see how it goes. So let's start with, first I have to decide, do I want my flaps on this side or do I want them on this side? I think I want them on this side. No real reason, just because. So I'm going to orient my album. Let me see. Mm. Uh, maybe I don't want to do that. <laughs> because some of these albums... No, I take it back. I think what I'm going to do is have them... No, I'm going to stick with my original... <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do, wanted to do originally, which is have them flip out this way. I mean, stop doubting yourself. I was only doubting it because one of the envelopes, when I cut it in half, created this opening here. And if I have these flips going that way, then this opening is upside down. But you know what we are going to do? We're going to seal it. So that's not a biggie. Let's do that right now before I forget. I am going to seal that. I am going to use some of my Tombow Mono Liquid Multi Glue. Just put a little bit in here. Oh my gosh. I love this glue. We'll just put a little bit in there. And that's that. There we go. So that takes care of that problem. Now I don't have to worry. 
Okay, so yep, let's work on the outside. So I'm going to take, I think we'll do the front cover first, right? Why not? And I'm going to try to place it so that this green border um, gets cut off. I think what I will do is decoupage it onto the album, let that dry, and then go back and trim it. So I want to place Santa so that he kind of looks something like that. So let's get some thing to glue him with. I am going to use um, some of this golden matte medium. I only recently started using this on recommendation of a few um, mixed media artists that I follow and watch here on YouTube. They all swear by this, so let's see what happens. <laughs> Actually, let me... put that on a little cover. I don't know if this is supposed to be used this way, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> I guess we will find out together. So I have a foam brush here. And I'm just going to put a layer of this not too thick but not too thin either and I'm going to go a little bit over the spine of the book oh boy wish me luck <laughs> I'm, I'm going to actually close this so that I can better see you know once this makes contact there is no real okay I think I did it <laughs> I was a little worried there um, but the placement seems yeah, that's pretty good placement, right? Mm, Santa's a little high, actually. Ooh, ooh, it's letting me lift it. Whoa, that's pretty awesome. So let me, whoa, where well, there's a plus. I've never had that happen before where I was able to lift a napkin after I put it down. But there you have it. Then I'm going to put a layer of this over it. See how this works out. It's my first time using this that medium almost like a collage and I don't know like a collage glue or whatever and I don't know that you're supposed to do that but I'm doing it anyway <laughs> what what the collage police are going to come get me yeah <laughs> so I think is that sticking no it's not sticking <laughs> let me add a little more to the back I'm not used to that maybe I just need to let it try and stop fussing or maybe this is not supposed to be used this way Oh my gosh, super genius here. 
careful. We don't want to rip Santa. That would be sad. Boy, if this does work out, I have to tell you, I love that I can keep lifting. There we go. Should I try heating it? You know, if it doesn't stick, I don't know, I have a heat gun here. I'm going to try that, and if it doesn't work, then I am going to just use my regular distressed collage medium. So forgive the loud noise, it's about to get loud here. Definitely not sticking everywhere. I do love the way it's fading back. That's kind of cool. But I think I'm definitely going to have to, especially right here, you see how that's lifting right there? That's not good. I don't want to have to worry. But that's going to lift. Really pretty though. I think the only trouble spot is this corner right here. did work guys Ooh -wee. <laughs> that's exciting I'm just lifting the corners to see I definitely I think want to add a little bit more over here but even that trouble spot is actually stuck so let me I'm going to cut the excess off and see what it looks like. Oh, that looks pretty. I'm excited. <laughs> I mean, I'm really good for the most part with knowing what glues to use with what but I don't know everything and a lot of times you just have to try it and you know hope for the best 
and I wasn't sure, I couldn't remember if I actually saw anyone collaging with this. Most of what I saw in terms of use of this particular item, and you know what, let me put the cover back on it so it doesn't dry. Most of what I saw was using it more to seal some mix, mi some mixed media projects, but I thought I would try it to collage with just because it was here and I wanted to try. And oh, that looks pretty, pretty. That looks very vintage. I love it. So, and it looks. I'm sorry, I'm gonna feel this and make sure like it's stuck. So, what I'm going to do is trim a little bit of this back. Oh, no, why trim it? Let's just rip it. A little more organic, right? Let's rip that. And have it wrap around. That feels really nice. Let's have it wrap around to the back. Wow. That's kind of exciting if this works because, like I said, it allowed me to lift the napkin some and adjust it because my original placement was a little too high. I think I'm going to use this excess I have on my fingers here to get these edges that I didn't quite get the first time around. So I think because I'm impatient, I am going to hit this with some more heat. And speed the drying process along. So here we go again. Goodness, doesn't that look good? I think it looks great. Okay, let's move this off. What do you think? Wow, nice vintage vibe off that one. It has a really nice texture to it, which I love. And then what we can do next is let's do the back. So I think we have Santa in the front. Santa in the front. 
and I think we are going to do the berries on the back. So let me first peel away some of the layers here. Maybe. Let me find a piece of tape. Let me try a piece of tape. <laughs> there it is. Sometimes not the easiest to peel away these layers, but I got it. I have to be nice and slow about it, not such a savage, and maybe I won't rip the tissue altogether. <laughs> That's sticking pretty good. Figure out what size you need here. Something about that size. Let's just cut a piece here. this so end of 2019 we have 2020 coming up and I'm curious if anyone has any not new year resolutions but more like crafty goals for next year 2020 um, I will share mine I have decided that I am going to do more videos of the style that I am doing right here right now where I just turn the camera on and share what it is that's on my desk and that I am working on it's not necessarily going to be a planned project but these are more intuitive type um, videos in that I am just going to craft and you can watch and hopefully craft along with me and see <laughs> what happens. We don't always have perfect projects and we don't always um, have planned projects. I think a lot of the time when we sit down and craft I mean for the average crafter not people who do this for a living I guess but for those who um, craft more as a hobby and less as a job you don't really have planned projects um, the majority of your projects are not planned projects I of course do plan some I've planned some tutorials that I've shared with you here on YouTube but a lot of what I do is this I have some time I'm in a crafty mood I have a nice show playing on television in the background in my craft room and I just craft so
so I think I'm going to start sharing those videos. Some of you might like that, some of you might not. And for those who don't, I'm sorry. But what um, I have as another goal for 2018 is to do um, what I want and not worry so much what others um, what others would like to see me do and just do what I want to do. We're going to turn this on again. So I've never had anyone complain that I don't do enough of a certain type of video. So when I say that I'm going to start doing what I want to do, I don't mean to imply that I haven't been doing that up to this point. But um, what I do mean to say is it's going to be a little more freeform. I will have some planned projects, of course. But it's going to be a just let's craft and see what, <laughs> what we have. Because this really is my favorite, favorite way to craft. You know, you buy things, they come in, and in that moment you have a billion projects in mind. And if you don't do the project right then and there, but instead keep saying, well, I have to plan something out so I could film it, um, I find that I just don't do it, or it takes me longer to get to it. So I recently started watching, I believe her name is Pam from the Paper Outpost, or the Paper Post. Oh my goodness. I will link her channel down below. But she said something in one of her videos recently that just, um, I don't know, it just, it just, it's, it sat well with me and it, and it, and it just, it was a truth. She said craft with abandonment, um, or reckless abandonment or something like that. Don't worry about measuring. Don't worry about, um, being exact, just craft and enjoy it and see what happens. So I do do that, but I don't record that because sometimes I feel like if it's not structured, if it's not step by step, then people might not be interested in watching it. And at the end of the day, I like to make videos that people watch, right? But I shouldn't make that my sole focus, right? I should also do videos doing things that I like to do. And hopefully, people will want to watch those too. So, I don't know if I'm making any sense, my friends. But here I am, experimenting with this stuff. <laughs> Playing with these napkins, these beautiful napkins. And it seems... To be working out just fine. We're going to trim off that excess here. My gosh, I'm not wearing my glasses, so I'm having to bring this up really close to my face. So I apologize if I keep going out of frame, but if I don't bring it close up to my face, I'm going to probably take off a finger. Um, I think I need to trim a little bit here. Gosh, you guys, I'm so happy with the way this turned out. Look how cute. Wow. Look at the back. How cute is that? And then here's the front. And the spine got covered as well. This seems to be holding up really really well so I'm excited about that 
Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> I would say that was a success. That was a success. Love the way that turned out. That's pretty awesome. So, I think what we need to do is distress the edges of this. What do you think? Should we do, I have green pine needle. I pulled out my distressed oxides in different colors. We have this pine needle, black soot. I took out vintage photo, but I'm going to do something other than vintage photo. How about a red? Festive berries. Oh my gosh. How do we not use festive berries? We have to use festive berries because they're berries on the album. I need to step away from my desk for a second and grab my daubers that I left in my mixed media cart. So give me a second. Okie dokie, I am back. I am going to try, I recently bought these new domed um, inking tools. Well, the inking tool is the same. What's different is I got these from scrapbook.com just because it was a good price at the time and instead of the standard flat um, ink pad I they had these domed ones and what I read about the dome ones that's different from the flat ones is because it's dome shaped you don't get those circles that you get sometimes when you use the flat ones um, you get um, circles, those circle marks in your projects. I mean, easy to blend out if you do it correctly and it's not major, but I thought I would try this and let's go ahead. I'm going to give that a good and let's see what happens. Oh, whoa. <laughs> That is bright. <laughs> oh my gosh, but I think it's perfect. Oh, that's pretty. I think that's pretty, guys. That's pretty. Let's put some here. Let's open her up. Oh my goodness. Yes, I'm happy, happy with that choice. I think red was a good choice. Now because I am using distress oxides. And I don't want these. To reactivate. I don't remember. Do the distress oxides. Reactivate. If you add water to them. Or if they. Are exposed. To water. After they dry. I'm not sure. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe seal these and what I'm going to use so I have some of this distress glaze I was just reading to make sure this was it I was pretty sure it was it so this can be used to um, seal distress inks, markers, stains, paints, and anything along those lines so that it won't reactivate 
later. So I am going to just apply some of this with my finger. I like using my fingers when I'm crafting. God gave me some amazing tools. I'm going to use them. <laughs> and I'm going to use it to seal this up. I am working it in to the cover and into the paper. I want the entire cover, front and back. Isn't that pretty? And it also, I think, brightens up the cover some. Right? Here's without it. Here's with it. That's really pretty. Happy with that. So let's do the other side. Really pretty. Yeah. Now watch. I'll do half on this side. And you can see for yourself what I'm talking about when I say it kind of brightens it up a little bit. So Distress Oxides, when they're dried, have more of a chalky finish to them. They're not um, as bright or vibrant as the original Distress inks. Something about the formula, guys. I don't know. Um, but um, I think this glaze brings some of that vibrancy some of that vibrant color back so here i have half of it done you see that shine this half is not done is there a noticeable difference might be hard to tell with this lighting i see it i definitely see it i wonder if you can but um i definitely see it so i am going to continue and do the other half So I think what I will do is once once we finish this book, I am going to once we finish the front and back cover, I will stop this video here. And then start filming a second one so my videos are not too long. So I guess in this video, we would have completed... Oh, it's so pretty. We would have completed the cover to our mini book. Isn't she pretty? Santa's looking good. And there's the back. And then next video, we will pick up. So thank you, my friends, for stopping in, for hanging with me. Um, let me know what you think down below of this style of video. And also, let me know what some of your 2020 crafty goals are. Are. I shared a few of mine. I have some more, but those are the ones that um, I could think of off the top of my head. This is so pretty. So definitely leave a comment down below. I love reading your comments. If you like this video, a thumbs up is greatly appreciated. If you like what you see and you want to come back and visit me, then subscribe. I would love to have you. I will catch you all in the next video, my friends. Until next time, bye-bye.